Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on USDA Foods Recalls. My name is Janelle Walker, and I will be the moderator today. Speaking today, we will have Tina Haynes, Senior Food Safety Specialist with the Office of Food Safety, and then we will hear from Kathleen Staley, Branch Chief of the Program Integrity and Monitoring Branch in the Food Distribution Division. So let's get started. Tina, take it away. Thanks, Janelle, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us to learn about USDA Foods Recalls. In today's webinar, we are going to focus on several things. Um, the Food and Nutrition Services role in a recall, the procedures for managing a USDA Foods Recall from a state and a school level, and we're going to tell you about some resources that are available to assist you in the event of a recall. But first, let me give you a little bit of a background why, why being prepared for recalls is so important. According to the Centers for Disease Control, about 48 million people get sick each year as a result of foodborne illness. Approximately 128,000 are hospitalized and 3,000 people die each year related to foodborne illness. That's why it's important to have procedures in place to respond to a food recall. This way, you can assure a quick response and protect children from food poisoning. This slide gives you the definition of a food recall. I'm not going to read that. You can read this slide on your own later. But basically what it's telling you is that a food recall occurs when there's reason to believe that a food may cause illness or injury. Okay. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about the communication process. Um, this is how a recall starts. Now communication is key to ensuring a quick and accurate response when a food recall happens. I want to provide a basic overview of how that communication process works within USDA. So the model that you see up here um, has the food manufacturer communicating with the Food Safety Inspection Service, and that's um, the part of USDA that does recalls. And you see a double arrow that points back to each one. So they communicate with each other. So if a manufacturer determines that there's a problem with the food, and that could be because of a detected pathogen or mislabeling or a foreign object, then they can communicate with FSIS and let them know about the problem and um, initiate a recall. FSIS would initiate a recall if it was deemed appropriate. And vice versa, if FSIS, the Food Safety Inspection Service, determines there's a problem, they in turn will notify the manufacturer and work together to remove the food from uh, commerce. And the arrows that are going down are the roles of FSIS, they would issue the press release if a recall occurred, and a food manufacturer is responsible for notifying its customers or consignees. So this, show, this slide is a basic overview of how that communication process begins within uh, FSIS. Now, FDA also has a similar, a similar process, but slightly different than FSIS. But um, I just wanted to show you what it looks like at USDA. Now, I work for the Office of Food Safety within the Food and Nutrition Service. And our mission is to protect people served by FNS programs from foodborne illness. And we do this by developing food safety education, instruction, and technical assistance resources to support FNS program operators. Here at FNS, we assist in communicating a recall. But I want to clarify that OFS, the Office of Food Safety, we have no regulatory authority. That would be the Food Safety Inspection Service, which is another part of, FS, another part of USDA. So we provide you with tools and resources and education and training to help keep um, the people in your programs safe. But we don't have the authority to do a recall. We also monitor complaints about USDA foods in conjunction with the Food Distribution Division for food safety concerns. 
we will liaison with the federal food safety regulatory agencies, which are, again, the Food Safety Inspection Service, FSIS in USDA, and the Food and Drug Administration. And this, would be, this can be during, before, during, and after a recall, depending on the appropriateness of the situation. We also provide resources to assist during a recall, which I will talk about later in this webinar. Now, I'm going to hand this over to Kathy. Thanks, Tina. So as Tina mentioned, the, um, in, within the FNS, the Office of Food Safety and the Food Distribution Division work very closely when, um, during the recall. So F, the Food Distribution Division will notify state distributing agencies of a USDA foods recall. Um, and remember, um, USDA foods um, is the brand name for donated foods. We may post a recall notification on the Rapid Alert System, RAS, in um, WebSCM, or if a recall is isolated to just a few states, we will um, make direct phone calls to those states to avoid any confusion. Um, and you're going to hear me say this a couple times um, during this webinar. No two recalls um, are the same. That is why it is important to update state contact information each year or any time there's a change. Recall information is sent to the states that have received the recalled USDA foods. It will include specific product identification information, including a photo of the case markings, product brand, vendor, lot number, to help you be able to quickly identify the recalled USDA foods. We will also provide instructions on what to do with the product. This sometimes changes throughout the course of the recall. The important first step is to remove the product from distribution and hold it until we know if the vendor is going to pick up the product or if the product needs to be destroyed. Do not assume that product needs to be destroyed. <clears throat> we will try to get the recalled product out of your storage as quickly as possible, but sometimes the food safety regulatory agencies need samples to be taken and tested and results analyzed before we can get tell you um, what you can do with that product. Um, I want to take this opportunity to let you know you will be receiving an email um, from food distribution in July asking you, reminding you that it's time for your annual update of the contact information in the Rapid Alert system. So it is important that you verify the contact information is current um, and you make any changes. And now would be a great time to assess, do you have the right people um, receiving the recall notifications? And it is always um, best practice to make sure that you have at least two people um, uh, contact information on the rapid alert system because it will never fail that someone will be on vacation um, and a recall will happen. So um, let's go um, to the regulations, 250.15, food recalls. The distributing or recipient agency, as appropriate, must follow all applicable federal, state, or local requirements for USDA foods subject to a food recall. In the event of a recall, FNS guidance is provided, including procedures or instructions for all parties in responding to a food recall, replacement of recalled USDA foods, and reimbursement of specific costs incurred in disposal of recalled product. Um, we're also, as you, um, you know, we're talking about a recall, it's also important to, um, after the recall, conduct an after action 
and discuss what went well, what needs to be improved, if there's anything that should be done differently. Um, and we do this after every recall with the Office of Food Safety. So um, now I'm going to talk about all the different USDA food options. So states and school food authorities have three USDA food options for how um, they choose to use their national school lunch program entitlement. USDA foods are purchased by USDA, the Agricultural Marketing Service, and they offer a variety of American-grown and produced foods such as beef, pork, fish, poultry, egg products, fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, and dairy products. The specifications for these products meet or exceed commercial standards for food safety, nutrition, and quality. USDA foods typically make up between 15 and 20 percent of the products served as part of school lunch. The remaining, remaining 80 to 85 percent of the food is purchased commercially. This is why it is so important that you all sign up to receive recall notifications from both food safety agencies, FSIS and FDA. I'm also going to take a moment, um, another role that we manage in food distribution and work very closely with the Office of Food Safety is um, handling any um, complaints with USDA foods. Um, complaints are very important, um, and some of the um, complaints that you have reported to us have actually ended up with the USDA food um, recall. So um, please, schools, report any issues with USDA foods to your state distributing agency. The state distributing agency will enter those complaints into WebSCM. Um, and as always, you are able to reach us on the USDA Foods Complaint Line, which is 800-446-6991. So let's start with USDA Foods um, Direct Delivery. These are minimally processed foods that focus on basic food components that can be used by um, school districts for a variety of different needs and flavor profiles. Um, for example, canned and frozen fruits and vegetables, fresh frozen and canned beef, pork, chicken, turkey, fish, cheese, yogurt, and grains such as rice and pasta. These products, again, are purchased by USDA, the Agricultural Marketing Service. And these are the foods that are ordered and receipted for using WebSCM. If a USDA Foods direct delivery product is recalled, FDD will notify the state distributing agencies. If multiple states receive the product, we will use WebSCM, the rapid alert system, to send out recall information which will include the recall notice, product identification, and instructions on how to handle the, the product. If it's just a few states, like I mentioned earlier, we will call you directly and share the recall information. So here is um, a photo of um, a product, a USDA direct delivery um, a frozen uh, corn, um, this product was um, involved in a recall in 2016. So um, this is just an example of the type of information that we will include in the, um, when we sent out a notification about a recall. So what this is um, identifying for you is who the manufacturer is, um, that is the big circle packed by um, CRF frozen foods at the bottom. The important circle up at the top, if you can't clearly see it, is the number 28814. Well, what does that mean? That is the date that the product was packed. So this particular manufacturer uses the Julian um, 
calendar, and this represents that the product, this um, frozen corn was packed on the um, 288th day in 2014, um, and it's actually um, October 15th, 2014. So we try to give you clear um, identification so that you can um, quickly identify the recalled product. Um, I will also um, use this as an opportunity to remind everybody this is why it's important that inventory come in and you use it um, because we, USDA food inventory should not exceed an amount needed for a six-month period. All right, so USDA foods bulk for processing. So these are typically raw food products that are sent to approved commercial manufacturers to be made into a variety of end products desired by schools. So some examples, bulk sweet potatoes, apples, cheese, chicken, beef, pork, and fish. Um, the USDA foods bulk product are again purchased by USDA um, Agricultural Marketing Service, and again, they are ordered and receipted using WebSCM. If the recall is of the bulk USDA food product purchased by USDA, FDD will notify the multi-state processors with national processing agreements who received deliveries of the recalled product, and we will provide the recall information. The processor will determine if the recalled USDA food product was used to produce end products or was substituted with commercially purchased product. Um, and the requirement for substitution is the commercially purchased food must be of the same generic identity of U.S. origin and equal or better in all USDA food specifications. If the processor determines the recalled USDA food product was substituted with commercial product, this is now a commercial food recall and the processor will notify you. Um, and I'll give you an example. In April 2016, um, Pilgrim's Pride had 4 million pounds of cooked chicken products, um, chicken nuggets and patties that were um, contaminated with extraneous or foreign objects, plastic, rubber, um, and metal that were involved in a recall. And Pilgrim's Pride notified um, states and RAs um, who um, had received that product. So the processor contacts the FDAs, um, the school food authorities, and the distributors with the recall information. And the distributors will provide information back to the processor about the quantity of product remaining in their inventory and the quantity of product delivered to each SFA. SFAs will report any inventory to the state distributing agency. So um, if the recall is of the bulk product purchased by USDA, FDA, FDD will notify the multi-state processor, again, with the national processing agreement. If these foods are involved in a recall, then we will notify the FDAs um, using WebSCM um, web rapid alert system. If a finished end product is involved in a recall, the processor will notify the SDAs and the schools. So um, here's an example of a bulk USDA food that went into a processor um, that was recalled, and we go back to 2009, um, and the Peanut Corporation of America, the um, product that was recalled was peanut butter in 500-pound drums. So again, we walk through the process of collecting all of the information, making sure that everyone has it and is reported, and it is reported back. And last of the USDA food options is USDA DOD Fresh. 
So the USDA Department of Defense Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program allows schools to use entitlement for fresh fruits and vegetables. The Food Distribution Division manages this program and the Defense Logistics Agency procures and manages the contracts with the 42 produce vendors who deliver produce to states and schools. These orders are managed through the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Order and Receipt System, referred to as FAVORS. If there was um, a recall um, involving produce, it is the vendor's responsibility to reach out. And again, um, here is an example. This was not a recall, but um, last year in April, you will all probably remember, when the Center for Disease Control and Prevention um, sent out a notice um, asking people not to eat um, romaine lettuce. And so when that came out, because it was so big and it was not a recall, we posted that information um, on um, favors so that everyone was aware of what was going on. Again, this was not a recall, so no information was collected. This was just an advisory from um, one of the um, food safety agencies that, that people should not be consuming um, romaine lettuce. So um, three different examples which um, illustrate how no two recalls are the same. So probably our most important message today is a timely response to recall is critical. And we fully appreciate and understand how busy states are managing distribution of USDA foods and school districts are with planning and preparing meals for children. But we cannot emphasize enough how critically important it is that when you receive a food recall notification, this needs to become your top priority to locate and label the recalled product do not use to avoid accidental use. SDAs must contact all in-state processors, state warehouses, or state contracted distributors who may have inventory of the recalled USDA food. And we're asking um, SDAs, please contact all of these people within 24 hours or less after receiving the recall notification. And schools, um, we're asking, um, and warehouse, state warehouses, distributors, that we're asking, again, and I know this is a heavy lift, that you conduct an inventory assessment and um, within um, 48 hours and submit that information um, to your state distributing agency. And Tina will emphasize um, very shortly why timing um, is so critical for all of this. So let's make sure um, in a recall that we all understand our roles and responsibilities. And it is always better to prepare um, and before a food recall. So it's important that you develop and implement a documented recall procedure for your staff. You train your staff on the procedures. Practice a mock recall. Don't wait for a recall to check if your procedures are effective. And it's also important that you have 24-7 contact information. Um, that you have a notification system to quickly provide the accurate product information for the recalled food to school districts, in-state processors, state warehouses, and contracted warehouses. And again, we're hoping that this all goes out within 24 hours of receiving the information from us. Um, it's also important that you know that when you have sent this information out, that you have confirmation that your, um, all of these parties have received that information. It's also um, important for you to have prior knowledge of the proper methods of disposal or um, for your um, local area and state. 
and provide specific destruction disposal instructions and forms um, needed to be completed by the, um, the schools. So during a recall, um, we're asking again that the schools collect that inventory assessment and return it to the states within 48 hours, um, that you have all of the recalled product inventory um, from the, the states are going to compile all of that recalled product inventory from the school districts and send it to food distribution. Um, the Food Safety Regulatory Agencies, food, um, FSIS and FDA, have a very tight timeline for this information to be collected. If we do not receive this information quickly, um, FDA or FSIS may contact you directly, which um, in previous recalls has caused some confusion um, and extra work for schools and states. So timing is critical. And after a recall, we ask states, make sure you're submitting the reimbursement claims and destruction verification forms to us. Take a breath and then find a few minutes to sit down and discuss with your staff what worked well, what needs improvement, is there something that needs to be changed or done differently, and then adjust your recall procedures as needed. As Tina had mentioned earlier, communication is key. All stakeholders need to clearly understand their roles and responsibilities during the recall. So we have similar slides for recipient agency roles and responsibilities. And again, I just say prepare is the key. Um, make sure that you have posted your recall procedures so your kitchen staff know where they are and they're familiar with them. Um, one of the things that we have observed, a challenge in the past, is it's a common practice if you get a master carton such as six five-pound um, bags of frozen corn that um, if you use three of those packages, you dispose of the master carton and put the remaining bags in the freezer. Think about how will your staff identify product removed from the master carton, which has the brand, vendor, and lot information. Since product traceability is such a critical component for food manufacturers' food safety programs, we're seeing more and more manufacturers um, include lot numbers on the master carton um, but, and also on the individual packages. If this isn't the case, it's a good idea to make sure you have some way of identifying those packages, mark a date, and keep a photo of the carton markings. Um, and Tina has um, some great tools for both states um, and RAs that she is going to share with you um, a little later. And um, RAs, it's also important, don't wait for the recall for that to be the first time that you become familiar with the communication tool that um, your state distributing agency uses. And again, during the recall, time is um, critically important. The most important thing you can do is isolate the recalled product and make sure it's clearly identified so it is not used. And then, again, after the recall, destroy and dispose of the product. Send us in the form. Um, typically, we're asking for two people to witness if the product is to be destroyed um, and, and submit that to your FDA. And then um, we will work with the appropriate um, vendor to make sure that um, product is either replaced or reimbursed. And again, take time to, um, after the event, to chat about what worked well, um, what didn't work so well, and what do we need to change. So Tina, I gave them a lot of information, and I know you have some great tools, so I'll let you take over. Thank you, Kathy. Um, we do have a lot of great tools, but um, first I, I want to mention something that Kathy alluded to earlier. Um, in one of the slides when uh, the timing is critical, the piece, uh, the slide that had the picture of the clock. Um, 
It is very critical. There's a tight timeline for collecting this information, as Kathy discussed. Um, and something you should know is that after a recall, the regulatory agencies, the FSIS, or Food Safety Inspection Service, and FDA conduct what's called recall effectiveness checks. And what that means is that they um, may go out to a facility to check to make certain that the product is removed and no longer available to co in commerce. Um, and that could involve a school if uh, USDA Foods is involved. Um, and these steps are taken to make certain, again, that a recall product is no longer available to be served, which could harm um, someone who, who takes that food. Um, and again, F, for example, FSIS does these. This is, this is routine and part of their normal business operation involving recalls. And it's done by uh, FSIS field personnel. And I'm, I'm talking specifically about FSIS because I'm more familiar with them working for USDA. FDA has a similar system, but um, I'm not as familiar with that. Um, so when this occurs, FSIS will not typically give you prior notification when conducting these recall effectiveness checks. They could just show up at your door. So we want you to know that as well. We don't want you to be surprised and who is this person at my door with the badge or um, with this ID, are they legit? Yes, they're legit and they will identify themselves as so. And they will conduct um, any recall, commercial or USDA foods, will conduct a sufficient number of these checks throughout the distribution chain to verify that, recall, that the recalling firm has been diligent in notifying the customer or consignee of the need to retrieve and control recalled products. So if, if, I, if, for example, if the Food Safety Inspection Service determines that a recalling firm has been successful in contacting its customers or consignees and has made all reasonable effort to retrieve and control the product, then FSIS will notify the firm to the firm that the recall is complete. So that kind of ends the cycle of the recall. So just know um, that, that you could be part of that if USDA Foods is recalled and you have products in your possession. And Kathy went over the importance of doing inventory and identifying the uh, foods that are recalled. Now, my great tools for you or FNS, we have some great resources for you. Um, first one that I want to mention is what you see on the screen now is a recall checklist. It's procedures or steps that you should take before a recall occurs, during a recall, and after a recall. And this particular one that you're looking at is for state distributing agencies. Um, and that will be, I will give you the link to this in a little bit, um, and that one is specific for state distributing agencies. And we also have a similar one for a recipient agency. And these are two tools that you can use to train or refresh yourself. Um, recalls don't happen every day, and when they, but when they do occur, you have to move quick, fast, and in a hurry, and this checklist can be something you have as part of quality control. You can check off what you know, what you don't know, what you need to do, you need to train more people, that kind of thing. So um, this will be available to you, uh, and I'll give you those resources in a minute, like I said. And um, now, we, we talked about signing, well, Kathy talked about signing up to receive recall notices from the regulatory agencies. Um, and these are for commercial recalls. And, because if you use commercial product, which you do, you're going to get notifications through these routes, not through WebSDM. So here it is. These are, this is the FSIS recall website and the FDA recall website. And if you search their site, there is a place where you can sign up to get notifications of recalls as they occur. So we highly encourage you to do that. Um, and these links are, you know, you have the copy of the slide. Um, so you should be able to um, connect with them and, and be assured that you get these commercial recall notifications. The link on this page is from the Food and Nutrition Service website. And what it is, I don't have a, a picture of it, I probably should have put one up here, but it's kind of boring. Um, <laughs> the, the document that we are leading you to is called Responding to a Food Recall Procedures, 
for recalls of USDA foods. And it was developed to provide you with an overview of the recall process for USDA, uh, for USDA foods, with a focus on school meal programs. It is um, a document uh, and requires some time to read. So it is available for you if you need the details. Go to that website. But what the Office of Food Safety has done, and which I showed you a few minutes ago, the checklist, that was a checklist that we created for the state distributing agency and the recipient agency were pulled from that document. And so we kind of summarized it for you in those checklists, what you need to do. But if you need more details, you can go to that document. Um, so the resources listed here on this side have contained the checklist that I spoke about a few slides ago, and also a link to some short videos that can be used in conjunction with the checklist. So we created an animated video that gives you an overview of the recall process for USDA foods from a state distributing agency perspective and from a recipient agency perspective. They're basically little cartoons, um, at least that's what I call they're animated, but they're very short, only a few minutes long, and would make a great tool for training or just as a refresher for yourself. And the last thing that I want to mention, and the other tool that we are providing for you to help with the recall, is the State Emergency Notification System, otherwise known as SEND. Now, some of you may already be familiar with this and are already using it. Um, and what this does, it allows state agencies to rapidly communicate critical food recall information to recipient agencies so they can remove contaminated food from distribution. Um, you know, like I said, your state may already be using SENS and you may be familiar with it, but if you're not, let me list some of the benefits for you. Um, it's, it uses current technology to send rapid notification. You can use it um, to send emails. It will simultaneously notify recipient agencies. It verifies that notifications are received. And it's free to state agencies. And did I say the cost to send is free? We're paid, paid for by USDA for you. And it allows you some flexibility. You can use SENS for recalls and more. Um, for more information um, about SENS, if you're not sure um, if your state uses it or if you want to sign up for it, please contact us. Um, we have a uh, email, um, let me see, I think it's, on the slide, uh, but I can't see for, for really, <laughs> I think it's on the slide. Um, Sends at fns.usda.gov, we'll have to get that to us. Um, so we, I think we have at least 40 states signed up, but please, like I said, it's free. If you may already have your own notification system, um, and that's fine if you choose to do that, but we just want to let you know that we also have this available to notify recipient agencies and schools about uh, recalls as well. And um, that is going to wrap up this portion of the webinar, and I think now we're going to answer some questions. Yes, well, thank you so much, Tina and Kathy, for providing some pretty important information regarding uh, USDA foods recalls. Thank you so much. Um, we've had several questions come in during the presentation, so I definitely want to jump right in. We do have some time. Um, but before I do that, I would like to turn everyone's attention to the survey questions that are on your screen. Um, please feel free to complete the survey questions while we have our presenters answer a few questions. So let's go ahead and get started with the question and answer session. So um, can we talk a little bit about the recall notification system? So I want to know, why didn't I receive a recall notification about advanced care food recall of the child nutrition's fully cooked flame broiled beef patties. Um, well, thanks, um, Janelle. And the reason for that is, um, and I think sometimes people get confused because of the child nutrition um, label, um, that is just commercial product. So Advanced Pierre would have reached out to those schools who received that product directly. It, it was considered a commercial recall. Okay, so that was a commercial recall and not a recall of, of USDA, USDA foods. Food. Okay, that makes sense to me. Now, I want to talk a little bit about um, 
single inventory. So with single inventory, how do I know if it is a USDA foods or a commercial product that's being recalled? You may not. And so that's why we really, um, both Tina and I, emphasize the importance of you being signed up to receive both um, FDA and FSIS recall notifications directly. So that's the way that you would be informed of any food recall. So could you tell me why it has to be done so quickly? Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. that's your favorite <laughs> question. Yeah, um, it, it has to be done quickly because when you want to get recalled products um, out of service. You don't want them to be accidentally served to someone. So timing is always of the utmost importance in dealing with the recall. Remember those statistics that I gave earlier from CDC, the Centers for Disease Control? Well, and those are statistics for illness, but, you know, it could be due to mislabeling, an allergen is declared, or um, a, a foreign object. But um, the regulatory agencies mean business when they when these recalls occur, and they want to make sure that the, the uh, manufacturer or distributor has notified their customers that the recall has occurred and that the product is out of distribution. Um, and I know schools have an extra step too, where they have to do inventory, and we know that's hard. But it's it's for your benefit and for all the people that you serve that you really. Really, I don't know how to say it, snap to it when a, a recall occurs. And FSIS will be doing effectiveness checks. Um, they have done them in schools. So they're coming to see to make sure. Not really, they're not there to, to uh, they're not the police, uh, but they are there to make sure that there is, the food is not available and that if maybe you weren't aware of it and then we need to go back and find out what happens so that doesn't happen again. No. So timing is definitely of the essence. Yeah. Very important to pay close attention to those notifications. So as we were, as I was listening to the webinar, um, I was kind of thinking, uh, what's the most common reason for a food being recalled? Um, well, great question, Janelle, um, and we're always curious. So for um, Food and Drug Administration, which handles um, most of the food um, and FSIS handling, you know, the meat and poultry and egg products. For FDA um, foods, it's undeclared allergens okay. um, and then microbial contamination. For um, FSIS, it's the microbial contamination. And then the one that I have seen most commonly affect um, USDA foods when there is extraneous matter, a foreign object um, um, in the food product. Okay, so those are the three main reasons why a food would be recalled. I think, I think that makes sense, and I've seen a couple of those things. Um, so just to make sure our audience is aware, could you uh, remind us where we can sign up to receive those notifications if there is a recall of USDA foods? So um, again, you are going to go into um, WebSCM, the Rapid Alert System, um, and make sure that um, you are signed up. And again, I remind everyone, it's always better to have at least two people signed up. Um, we will be sending out reminders in July. It's our annual update to make sure the contact information is current and that we have everyone. Because there's staffing turnovers and people leave um, or new people are assigned the task. So we want to make sure that we have the current contact information. And if at any time during the year that does change, you can go into WebSCM and, and update the information. Okay. Well, thank you for that tidbit. I know it's a lot of information to take in, but I think the most important thing here is just making sure that everyone is signed up to receive those notifications. So I wanted to touch a little bit on about consumption. So let's say a food is recalled and it's already been consumed. Maybe the recall happened a month later. Um, and but there were no cases of a foodborne illness. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. That's also a pretty common occurrence. Um, and I can give an example of the USDA food um, uh, probably last year that was recalled towards the end of the school year, and it was actually as a result of a complaint um, that a school had put um, put in WebSCM about the USDA food, and it was. Um, uh, involved a foreign object. So um, at that point, most of the food had been consumed, um, and the company did do um, a recall. 
fortunately, no one was hurt or injured. Oh, good. Um, so there was a case of, yes, most of the food had been consumed, um, but um, FSIS and the company had um, made the determination that a recall was necessary. Okay. Now, in terms of the notifications and having contacts identified, is there a difference between being signed up as a recall contact in the rapid response system versus WebSCM, uh, being a WebSCM recall contact? That's an interesting question, Janelle, and my understanding is, is that you are, um, since the recall rapid alert is part of WebSCM, that it's one and the same. Um, but I will make sure that we follow up and make sure that that information is accurate. Okay. Sounds good. Now, I just want to remind everyone that the webinar slides are available for download. They are, they are in the top right corner of your screen. I also sent an email out today with those slides. So you will be able to find the links to sign up to receive the notifications that were um, discussed in this presentation, as well as the links for all of the resources uh, that were discussed. So um, I just wanted to touch a bit on, we talked a little bit about consumption, and I think we kind of have that all cleared up, that there have been instances in which food has been recalled after consumption. And the example that you gave us, Kathy, no one was harmed, and that's, that's a wonderful thing. Um, is there a place where I could potentially find past recalls? Like, what if I wasn't on a notification list, or maybe I'm new to a position, and I just kind of want to double check. Is there a place where I could look at recalls that have maybe happened in the past? Um, well, for commercial recalls, yes, you would go to the FDA website or the FSIS website and they have the listings of their recalls there. Um, so you, you would have to, um, I don't know if there's a, a way to search them by specific criteria or not, but that's where I would start, definitely. Okay, I think that's a really good place to start. And um, just I wanna remind the audience that we did record this webinar and it will be available for you all within a week or two from today. Um, so you can definitely use it as a tool to uh, train your employees or to just do a quick refresher. Um, it's a very important topic. And as we mentioned already, timing is of the essence. So it's something that I think we could um, always do a quick refresh on. Okay, so I see um, another question that has come in. Um, you guys are really um, thinking this afternoon, so thank you for your thoughtful questions. What's the difference between a recall and a market withdrawal, and would FSIS be involved? Yes. Um, so again, um, reminder, no two recalls are alike. Um, a recall, a market withdrawal, um, and we had some USDA foods um, involved in that not too long ago. That is when um, FSIS and the manufacturer decide that the best way to remove the product, that it was, um, the distribution was very limited, that it isn't a recall but a market withdrawal. Um, and we were able to do that with two states who had received some canned meat product. And it was a market withdrawal, and um, again, it was a product that USDA Agricultural Marketing Service purchased. Um, we knew who had received it through WebSCM. We were able to contact them. Um, the two states worked quickly to get that information out to their schools, provide that information to us, and the vendor was able to um, reimburse them for that product. Oh, that's great. Well, I have one last question, and it's, it's related to consumption. It just kind of came to me. So if there is a possibility that someone consumed a product that was recalled, um, is it required that the public be notified? So if, a, if there was a product that is in a school system and that product was recalled but it had already been consumed by the students, like would it be a requirement for the parents of the students or the parents of that school to be notified that a food item had been recalled that was already consumed? 
So again, the, the public notification comes from FDA and FSIS and the recall notification. Right. Um, so, you know, that, that can happen. Even with a commercial recall, someone, many people could have consumed the product um, but may not have gotten ill or sick. Um, whether or not it's required that um, someone be notified, I'm not aware of that. I, I think that would be very difficult. Mm -hmm. You don't know exactly where the product mm -hmm. went once okay. it leaves the, you know, the school lunch line. Or, um, so just letting people be aware of where the product, like the school had the product and it was served, and maybe a child did get sick, then there's a, maybe a trail you could go back, but that person would have to go to a doctor mm -hmm. and figure if that's what caused the problem. Okay. That's with any any recall. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And and what about, you know, in, in the moments where there is a recall and you have to dispose of those items, is that the RA's decision of how they dispose of it or do they have to wait for instruction from anyone? Um, so for USDA foods, we asked that we provide, you wait for us to provide the instruction um, because, again, <clears throat> we need the documentation to be um, in order to get you replacement and reimbursement. All right, wait for instruction. Well, I want to thank our presenters for providing information on how to handle recalls of USDA foods, and I also want to thank all of you all for joining us today.